würde ich von A in 5 Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's contribution to the Legal Innovation Conference organized by the Swiss Legal Tech Association. Before starting with the presentation itself, I quickly wanted to make some introductory remarks. First of all, I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy during this challenging time. And I wanted to thank the Swiss Legal Tech Association team, and in particular Christoph Küng and Mirko Eigenmann, for inviting me to participate in this year's conference. And with these introductory words, let me start with today's topic, document and knowledge management view from Big Law. I will speak about the following four topics today. First, a short overview and introduction to the topic and a few words about myself. Then I will present the different types of knowledge management and also the big law view for these. And then finally, I will conclude, conclude with a few key takeaways. As an overview and introduction, let me begin with the question. What is document and knowledge management? The question seems simple, but it is not as easy as it might look at first sight. Document management is relatively straightforward. It is all about managing documents, how to organize, how to file or store these documents, how to access them and so on. Be it physical or in today's world, typically in, in an electronic document management system. However, knowledge management is a bit harder to define and therefore I've decided to use some help with two quotes. Knowledge management is, according to Meredith Levinson, the process through which organizations generate value from their intellectual and knowledge-based assets. Or the second quote, um, according to Patrick Di Domenico, knowledge management is about connecting people with people, connecting people with knowledge and information, and the processes, procedures, and technologies required to make these connections. Myself, I try to work with the following analogy. Knowledge management is like a golf caddy. It is possible that the golf caddy's main tasks are carrying clubs and find lost golf balls, which is probably more like document management. But knowledge management can be so much more, as can be a good, good golf caddy. He or she can, for example, give advice on the wind, the grass conditions, the right club to use for the players and so on. Or the golf caddy can even use technology such as the weather forecast in, in the preparation of the course, the GPS positioning, laser distance measures, data from other players that have played the course, or data from other rounds that the same player has already played. Or the caddy can be a, a discussion partner for the golfer on all these questions and topic. And taking it even one step further, the golf caddy could share the results with other caddies and other golfers which would then result in all golfers become better players, having lower scores on the, on the respective golf course, and then be even happier on this golf course. So the golf course itself would become more popular. So in the end, the caddy cannot only help the respective player find the lost golf ball or choose the right club. The caddy, if used in an efficient way, can also improve the whole environment with improving the player, the other players and even the golf course. Let me finish the introduction with a few short words about myself. My name is Andreas Hinsen. I am a local partner at Lloyds & Luft Switzerland and I am mainly active in the areas of corporate and M&A. Lloyds & Luft is one of the biggest continental European law firms with offices in four countries and rep offices in all the major financial hubs of the world. And with this short introduction, let's jump right in. In approaching the topic of document and knowledge management, I would also like to talk about the different types that, that exist. The first distinction that is typically made is smart versus stupid. In particular, are smart solutions involved or are we talking about the pure database setting? Which brings us right to the next type, push versus pull. Does the solution of document management actively push knowledge 
or updates to its users, to the clients, etc. Or is it a pool only concept like the database that I mentioned, where the users or clients have to find the right document or the right person that has the knowledge? Another important distinction is the difference between internal document and knowledge management and external or client facing document management. These types bring from a law firm perspective very different requirements, in particular in relation to the professional duties, governing law, confidentiality obligations and so on and so forth. Additional types include databases that are homemade, meaning internal databases that the respective law firm has fed with its own documents, or databases from third party providers where many different service providers exist. I'm going to name Westlaw, LexisNexis, but there are many, many more. Then there's also the, dis the distinction as to what content is, content is available. Is it a strictly knowledge based database? In our case, a legal database with templates, articles, memoranda. Or is it a more dynamic database that is also connected to, for example, business development or marketing and serves other purposes as well? And finally, the interesting type, is it a technology based or I'm going to call it a people based solution? Um, are there smart tools that use technology when searching, when drafting, when um, making precedents? Or is it basically a people based solution where it's just basically a know whom to call solution. Moving on to the core of the presentation, the big law view on document management. For this, we first have to take a step back and ask ourselves some questions, starting with the first one. How can we improve our business? Of course, law firms are businesses. And in our daily work, as do many other businesses, we ask ourselves some questions as in how can we improve the quality, the consistency, the efficiency in our work? And the most important question that we have to ask ourselves is how can we improve our client service? For this, of course, we need to know what do our clients expect from us? Of course, our clients expect the high quality of work, meaning the best possible legal advice that we can provide. However, even the best legal advice is not helpful if there is a lack of availability, responsiveness and speed. An additional part that is also important in meeting the client's needs is the best legal advice is also worthless, worthless if it's not usable for the client in its business and doesn't meet its needs. So there are, of course, many more expectations of our clients, but I think for the purpose of this presentation, this will do the trick. So what can we do to improve our client service or to better meet the expectations of our clients? Again, there are many ways of how we can do that. I will give just a few examples. First and foremost, one of the most important tools is of course the training and education of younger, but also of the, of the older lawyers. Then the monitoring of the markets and the industry to ensure that we can see things also from a client's perspective and then use this knowledge for proactive information of the client. An additional important tool is the obtaining of client feedback on where we can improve. Again, as I mentioned, there are many more, but I will leave you with these for the time being. So how can document and knowledge management assist with improving our client service? I will distinguish these in three parts, the backward looking, the forward looking and the making of the right connection. The backward looking assistance consists mainly of the setting up key and keeping updated of the internal database of documents, the agreements, memoranda that I've already mentioned. Then this would not only serve as a help to look for the right template, but also as a help to you know, when, 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 um, when preparing pitches or submissions for awards. An important topic is, of course, also the, ex the exchange platform. I will come to this in a second. Further document and knowledge management can assist with debriefings or after action reviews, be it internally within the teams of the law firm that was involved, or as an additional step, an external debriefing with the client or her former or employees or employees that are about to leave. 
In terms of forward looking, there are certain topics where document knowledge management can also assist. In particular, with the standardization and automatization of processes and documents, or by identifying suitable sources of information and managing or even providing internal and external trainings. And the third topic that I wanted to mention is the topic that falls somewhere in between these two, these two topics. It's the making of the right connection, mainly the right connection between people and people, meaning connect, connecting someone seeking knowledge with someone having the knowledge, or connecting the people seeking knowledge with the right information or the right document, and ideally, as I've mentioned already, creating a knowledge sharing environment. With this, I want to give you a short overview of what tools law firm use in document and knowledge management. You will understand that I will refrain from naming specific service providers or specific programs um, that are used, but I will present an overview of the typical tools that are available in the market currently. And if someone is interested, I'm sure a short Google search will help. And if not, please write me an email or, or give me a quick call. Starting with a topic that is not within the core of document and knowledge management, but something that is very important for typically mid to large sized law firms, the much loved CRM system, the customer relationship management system. These tools are essential in business development, especially in larger firms, so that people from different departments, from different locations can coordinate their customer relations and um, use these to, to, um, for business development purposes. Further, content creating tools are very important in everything that is external facing. So helping with, with newsletters on home pages, with articles or other documents that have to be tailored to, to the respective recipient. One of the most one of the tools that is most talked about currently in the legal community is everything that is related to automatization. And here I want to talk about automated drafting and um, and uh, the e-discovery or e-due diligence. Currently, the automated drafting is only really available for standard documents such as corporate filings or simple agreements. However, there are very interesting tools that are working to, for example, propose additional clauses or wordings for agreements, or that can even predict the outcome of negotiations on a contract. In terms of e-discovery or electronic due diligence, the tools available are very much helpful in reviewing standardized documents or when looking for certain keywords in a, in, in a large and many number of files. And this with a precision that is unmatched and probably unmatchable for us humans. Also available are so-called client portals that make the knowledge of the respective law firm available for its clients or if used as a marketing and business development tool, even to prospective clients. An essential tool, of course, for every law firm is its database. Therein, basically all the files it receives and produces are saved until their eventual disposal. Typically, these documents are sorted by the respective clients and matter types, and then provide some kind of basic or even smart search function. Of course, with the obvious restriction applying to sensitive works, for example, in case of um, public companies or in, or, in, um, or in competitive bids. Such a database is also the tool used to store and access internal standard documents. Of course, very important for a law firm is also the legal research. So there are legal research tools internally and externally and there are many external service providers um, uh, um, that provide very sophisticated tools in this connection. Technology is also, also used in, in, in education that um, there are, for example, very impressive client trainings that banks have, um, have prepared that use video or even VR. These systems typically also provide for a tracking system for completed training so that a continuous training um, of the employees is ensured. And finally, a tool that more recently has found its way into law firms, project management tools. With such a tool, it is possible to assign tasks to individual people 
track the process, create discussion groups, share documents, and even provide the client with access for, for, for tracking of the progress or even tracking of the fees that have accrued. Coming to the end of the presentation, I want to end with certain key takeaways that I have learned at my time in big law and when working with document and knowledge management tools. First of all, no size fits all. Every law firm or rather each company has to decide which tool is best, depending on its need and the specific circumstances such as the area of practice, the size, the different locations involved and of course the client's needs. Further, the content is as important as the technology and vice versa. The best technology is worthless without the high quality content and the best content is worthless if it cannot be found or shared. Which brings me to the next learning. KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. When starting with a new tool or system, simplicity is key. If a tool is simple but works, this will gain much more traction within the organization and allow to build on it. On the other hand, a too ambitious tool that will most likely fail will frustrate all people involved and if a certain amount of money is invested, even those not, not directly involved. Further, a good tool takes significant time investments and this on a continuous basis. For example, databases have to be updated, technology has to be kept up to standard. And finally, mistakes will be made, but learning from them is key so that the tool can be improved or, if necessary, exchanged for the next, the better tool. With this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And please do not hesitate to contact me under the, under the details shown here in case of any questions or remarks.